of the drivers that I've been patiently waiting to get released over the past year or so has been the NVK open source driver for the NVIDIA GPUs or for NVIDIA GPUs. And it finally has arrived as uh, Mesa 24.1 did get released like last week or sometime or maybe even longer than that. And uh, it did get enabled by default in Mesa. So that means that you can use it if you're above kernel 6.7 and you're on Mesa 24.1 or above. So with my RTX 2060, which is by MSI, I decided to try it in. I, I plugged this into my computer and I installed NVK, I enabled the kernel parameter and I decided to test some games and muck around on the desktop to see the experience that uh, was, I guess, all right on NVK. But of course, since this driver is rather new, there is problems and that's mostly with the games that I decided to test on this GPU. Uh, so if you are above AMP or Turing, uh, you can actually use NVK with the GPU. GSP firmware fully, so like everything should work, like sensors, the RPM with the fan speed, all that stuff should be uh, recorded in uh, in terms of like system monitor type stuff. That stuff should all work properly with GSP firmware. And so the games that I did decide to test with this GPU was Cyberpunk, The Finals, Apex Legends, Overwatch 2, Valheim, X Defiant, Battlebit, Terraria, and well, which games worked well? The majority of them are just black screened basically and I was really wondering why this was the problem that I was having why it was black screening and it seems like it's a problem with uh, Vulcan on my side somehow as I've seen other people who have been running NVK and they're able to actually launch games properly and, and play them properly and I was uh, really wondering why it wasn't working for me and I made sure that all my packages were removed from like let's say the Nvidia proprietary packages I made sure that those were removed and then I also made sure that the AMD packages like the Vulcan Radeon packages were removed also. And then I, I of course enabled the GSP firmware in the kernel as a kernel parameter in my grub, uh, similar to how you enable the mode set on the NVIDIA proprietary driver. I did the same thing. I went to the grub config file. I enabled that GSP firmware uh, from like one of the comments that I was reading that was helping one of, the, uh, one of my viewers who was helping me a little bit about enabling GSP and how to do it. Uh, thank you for helping me out, by the way. And uh, I was able to you know, actually get it all working and install the Vulcan Novu plus the Lib32 Vulcan Novu uh, packages and I was able to start using it. So I was really confused as to why these games weren't uh, launching but the only game that was able to work correctly was Terraria. Um, I'll show up a video of Terraria <laughs> and the reason that it weren't was because it was running through OpenGL instead of Vulcan and it wasn't running through Zinc either it was just running through OpenGL natively as you're supposed to use uh, Zinc which is a a compatibility layer for translating OpenGL and just improving on it for NVIDIA cards I'm guessing it just improves it and I wasn't able to use uh, Zinc on Terraria I did use a launch command to try and force Zinc on it uh, but all it did was black screen so it seems like there's some problem with uh, Vulcan on my end when it comes to the other games uh, and also when it does come to uh, like using Valheim for example when I tried to play that uh, my fan speed decided to increase really loud that it actually looked it sounded concerning that it got so damn loud so i was like no i'm just not gonna test that anymore because it just it, my fan speed kept ramping up really loudly and it was like really concerning because it was like so loud it was just like this gpu shouldn't be getting this loud and it just kept increasing slightly by bit even though it was still like black screening so when it comes to uh you know games that run through dsvk and vkd3 for, for me uh they do not work they just black screen i also did try Tried Team Fortress uh, 2. That was another game that I tried, and that also did not work properly under Vulcan, and it also didn't work properly under OpenGL. So I was like, you know, I was really confused. And I even checked if I was using the NVK driver, and I was. When I checked my about settings in the KDE Plasma, it shows the NV166, uh, which is the RTX 2060 series on the NVK um, documentation. It says that 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 is a RTX 2060 or 2060 Super or 20 other 60 
NPCs that they have available. So yeah, I was really confused as to why uh, those games uh, weren't, weren't working properly. But uh, of course, what about the desktop experience with using NVK? And well, that was awesome. There was no real problems with uh, NVK on the desktop. I was able to use it, bounce around in different menus, and it just worked really smoothly. I I'm pretty sure Explicit Sync was working properly also. It seemed like it was working because it was like, really smooth. <laughs> but that, of course, you know, Implicit Sync does run really well as well. So could have been either one. Uh, my documentation for that is very vague. I haven't really searched that up to see which one is actually being used on NVK, but the desktop experience was really nice. Now, one of the other things that I noticed was like when I tried to open OBS to record some footage, um, well, NVENC isn't available in NVK because it's an open source driver. The NVENC is a proprietary codec, so you can't use that on the open source NVK drivers. And there was no VARPI, which if you don't know, there is a, a VARPI decoding package that you can use on the NVIDIA proprietary driver, but it, it's a bit flaky and it doesn't work on everything. So it might be a bit of a challenge for the NVK developers to add VARPI encoding to NVIDIA GPUs uh, when you want to record on, on your GPU. Uh, but hopefully they do add that as I would like that. Uh, so in the meantime, when you are using NVK, you do have to use X264 to encode uh, your, you know, like if you want to record any type of gameplay, you're going to have to use X264 in OBS. And yeah, when it comes to bugs on the desktop, there was no real big issues in my opinion. There was no graphical issues necessarily that I noticed that were like really bad and it just like ended my experience with using the desktop. There was none of that. It worked extremely well for you know such an early driver I would say in development and uh yeah there's like no no bugs really except the gaming side like there is bugs on the gaming side so if you do want to use NVK how do you install it well if we go back to our desktop here and we open up our terminal we need the Vulcan Novu and the lib32 Vulcan Novu now before that I would make sure that you uninstall all of your all of your Nvidia proprietary drivers you make sure that's all removed you don't have to remove the mode set kernel and your grub or your system that you don't have to remove that you can keep that there as I heard from someone uh, in the comments was uh, testing it uh, that you don't need to remove it it is all good uh, you should be able to keep it there in your grub and there should be no problems but yeah you need the uh, Vulcan uh, Novu package and the lib32 Vulcan Novu package and you need of course Mesa 24.1 and kernel 6.7 or above so if you are using something like Arch well Arch is on 6.9.3 so you're all good there uh, but yeah you need the uh, Vulcan uh, no uh, driver uh, package and when you search this up here as you can see it is in the extra repository and the lib32 is in the multi-lib so you want to install both of these and then you want to of course make sure that all those NVIDIA proprietary uh, drivers are removed and other things like EGL Wayland like all those things need to be removed uh, and it might be a bit tricky for you if you don't know what you're doing uh, so I would just you know take this very carefully make sure that everything is removed you know what you're removing and if you do remove something and it does break it is not my fault uh, that is your fault for going ahead and just doing all this because uh, it can of course break your system that is not my fault so that's your fault if you do that if that happens to your computer and uh, the next thing we need to enable is the GSP firmware which if you don't know what that is is basically just what controls the Nvidia card so they can see like the system monitors type stuff so like your fan speed uh, your you know, system temperature of the GPU and just like all that so that it can control it properly when you are doing like really intensive things so to enable it on grub you need to go to your slash etc slash default slash grub so we do sudo nano we do slash etc slash default slash grub and then we want to go to our grub cmd light linux default equals and then we want to add the novu.config equals capital n and then lowercase v capital g lowercase sp capital um, r and then lowercase mx1 you want to put it in, in values uh, quotation marks and then the space course and then you want to do control x and then y and then enter to save the actual uh file for the grub config and then we want to update the grub config so then uh, it can actually be used on your kernel so you want to do sudo space and then grub mk config space uh, dash zero slash boot slash grub slash grub dot cfg and it will update your grub so then that can actually be added to the kernel so then it can actually be used and if you are on 
system D, you do need to go to your slash boot slash loader slash entry slash kernel.com for whatever your Linux kernel is called. And you just want to open up that kernel on your text editor and you want to add that kernel parameter that I just showed you before. You want to copy that and you want to paste it on the end of the options, which you have to look through to see where you find options. And you want to add a space and then add that kernel parameter, which there'll be other type of parameters there probably as well. You just want to do space and then add it. And then you want to save it. It probably asks for your password. You enter that in and then it's saved and you can just reboot and that's it. You're done. Your GSP should be activated and you should be able to start, you know, actually using your operating system uh, a bit more with NVK. So when it does uh, come to the conclusion of the NVK driver, I definitely think the NVK driver is the future of, you know, when it comes to using a open source driver on Linux for the general user. If you're not doing like, if you're doing anything that's like intensive work, like you're opening up Blender and you're like, in, uh, what's it called? Like rendering things really heavily with like Cuda and all that stuff. Or like you're in a game engine, you know, like of course you'll need the proprietary driver. And if you just want to do that as like a hobby type thing, then yeah, you're going to have to use the proprietary driver. But for a general user, I would say the NVK driver will be ready very soon. I think the game stuff is going to get improved dramatically in the coming months. And probably by the end of the year, I bet NVK will be like a basically ready driver that you can use on your NVIDIA card and have an enjoyable time on the desktop and on the gaming side of things. And I think it will just, it will solve that problem of when people install a Linux distro and they expect the drivers to be pre-installed and then they find out that it's not and they're like, well, how do I install it? And they have to go and do all this research. And that's just a bit of a hassle for some people who are coming over from Windows and have never actually installed a driver really. They've only like fitted a driver either in like the NVIDIA GeForce app or something like that, but they've never actually like, you know, opened up a, a you know, add a kernel parameter, you know, open up a, I don't know, some GUI manager to install a driver. Because some people, they don't really like to do that, so it can be difficult for them. And so I, I'm, this NVK driver will probably solve that problem and give the user a decent experience where they won't notice anything drastically different and they won't go, you know, why is the performance so bad? Or why is, you know, this missing? And if, if they're asking like, where's NVENC or where CUDA is? Well, we will just have to direct them to the proprietary driver because that's the one uh, you'll have to use if you want those proprietary features. So if you did enjoy this video, I definitely would give it a like. Uh, definitely subscribe to the channel if you want to. You don't have to, of course. Uh, we are at like 4.5k subscribers, which is awesome to see. I thank you all for that. And uh, I'll show up a screenshot of the supporters on my channel. If you do want to become a supporter, it's rather uh, cheap, I would say. I think it's like $1.40 or something like that. But of course, you don't have to. I would definitely be giving some of your money towards uh, the Linux projects that are actually putting their time and effort into improving uh, the drivers on the Linux desktop space so that we can have a better time on, on Linux or like, you know, like a desktop environment that you like using. I would definitely uh, give some money towards them. Even if it's just a little amount, uh, it's definitely worth it. And, and they'll definitely uh, be very happy to receive you know, those small donations as, as they do matter uh, and they do um, improve and they're able to actually do a lot more things in the Linux space. So without further ado, I'll see you guys in the next video. Uh, peace.